Welcome back, John Cohen of Science Magazine. 36 hours into the conference, the overriding theme seems to be this tension between virtually all of the people attending this conference and the donor governments. Not enough money, they say. It's understandable. The world went from no poor people receiving antiretroviral drugs not all that long ago, you know, 2002, 2003, there was nothing. And now we're up to 5 million people. Who paid for it? The rich countries of the world. And now they want to expand, and they also want to keep everybody going who's on drugs. And the rich countries are going, we, we don't have any more money. And so they're looking at everyone, and they're also looking at the developing countries and saying, hey, you promised you would pick up some of the slack here. And there, there, there was a presentation today where a woman put up pictures of leaders' cars and private planes and from developing countries to say how many lives could be on treatment if this person didn't own this uh, vehicle. I, I think there's outrage at everyone for not doing more and taking advantage of the opportunity because so much good has happened with what has been invested. That's the bottom line. And underscoring the financial situation was this report that the Kaiser Family Foundation, along with UNAIDS, put out in which it showed that, that funding basically had flattened. That was very sobering because nobody had really documented it before. And so we now can see very clearly that we've hit the ceiling. And if you look back over the past five years, you see the skyrocketing of funding. So it's as though you grew up in a wealthy family and suddenly your parents lost their jobs. And an interesting dynamic to my mind occurred today. Here in Vienna, at all of these AIDS conferences, they're known as the two bills. Bill Clinton and Bill Gates both spoke separately before very large audiences. And so this issue of what donor governments are giving suddenly became more about what the United States is doing. I think that's really perceptive. And it was interesting how both of them dealt with that, too. And with the case of Bill Gates, it's not just what is, why isn't the United States doing more, why aren't you doing more? Yeah. But what was interesting is that both of them deflected it in, 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 a, in a very, uh, it seemed genuine way. And one of the things in the Kaiser report I found interesting that I, that I have here is if you look at the U.S. contribution based on uh, gross domestic product, it, what you can see is the U.S. is actually contributing more than everyone else. And that was the point that both of them were making is, hey, don't just get all in your druthers about the U.S. The U.S. could do more, but it's doing a lot. There are other countries, and ironically, Austria, where the meeting is being held, is one of the worst of the wealthy nations who could do a lot more. And one of the other words besides the financial, financial issue that we're hearing a lot about is the need to find greater efficiencies. Yeah. Are you hearing any big new ideas about New efficiencies, meaning you get more bang for the dollar. When Bill Gates spoke, there was a protest that took place right before and during his talk of these people who want the Robin Hood tax, which mm -hmm. says take financial transactions and tax those. And later at a press conference, I asked him, do you, do you support this Robin Hood tax? And he said, no, the people I know in the financial world don't think that's going to work. So here was the most prominent of you know big money ideas to bring in new money and Bill Gates who knows something about money and certainly knows more than I do saying no it's not going to work Clinton had a lot of ideas there is an airline ticket tax there's this red campaign that brings in money and Clinton said you know maybe we should do like cell phone sort of telethons like what happened with Haiti or add 50 cents to sports tickets but my sense was it's all really fuzzy that nobody has a concrete plan for how to find you know, this is a shortfall of $16 billion a year. And no big new ideas in terms of how to better deliver drugs, how to better create a more effective health care system in a poor, needy community. I certainly didn't hear anything that made me turn my head. What I heard was that the things we know work aren't being applied task shifting, for example, moving something from a nurse instead of a doctor. Mm -hmm. Well, they've been talking about that for years. Could it be done more aggressively? Well, of course it could. But why is it going to magically happen now? Because there's a financial pinch? Certainly that will push it, but it's not a new idea. And there are lots of little things like that you can do to save money. But I didn't hear anything particularly innovative. It was just saying we need to monitor it more closely and push it. Let's move on to the science yeah. for a moment. I, I know that you heard a speech at the opening ceremony Sunday night that, that very much um, interested you, and it was about a cure. Yeah. 
And it, it ties right into this because, okay, here's the world saying we can't afford this. Well, what's the best way to stop spending money on AIDS? Cure people so they don't need drugs any longer. Is it a fantasy? It has been thought of as a fantasy since the beginning of the epidemic, and with good reason. It's an incredibly difficult thing to clear the virus from a person's body because it weaves itself, in, it weaves itself into our chromosomes. But there's a new idea that, well, what if you could treat people with something that got them off of antiretroviral drugs for prolonged periods, maybe for life? That's called a functional cure. So there's this whole momentum now to try and do that, and also with that you know, exotic dream of completely wiping out the virus. And there's good reason now to think that it's possible, reason that didn't exist a few years ago. What's the good reason? Well, there's a symbolic reason, and that's that one person appears to have been cured. It was a very unusual case. It was reported in the New England Journal of Medicine. One person. One person. But still, it shows it's possible. He had a terrible cancer and had a transplant. Of, you know, his immune system was basically wiped out and replaced. It's nothing you would you know, do with other people. But it, it, there's an old saying in science. You only need one talking dog to know that a dog can talk. You don't even need a control group. This was kind of a talking dog. You went, whoa, it, it looks like this guy's cured. I mean, he went from needing antiretroviral drugs. He hasn't had them for a few years. Virus has not come back. So it opened up ideas. I mean, minds and ideas came forward. New funding has come forward. And there have also been technical advances in the basic research that make people think, we've got new tools to get at the very question why we haven't been able to cure. And do you want to ask me what that is? What? <laughs> it's fantastic. The reason that I love this stuff anyway, because it's just, it's the grittiest of science, and it's really complicated, but at its core, it's really simple. When you're infected with HIV, you have some cells in your body that don't produce the virus. They have the virus, but they don't make new ones. They're just sleeping, they're dormant, and they make pools, reservoirs of latent sleeping cells. So to cure somebody, you've got to wake those cells up and clear them because the immune system can't even see the virus there. It can't wipe those out. Anti-HIV drugs do nothing to those sleeping viruses. So the new idea is, one idea is, how do we tickle those cells and wake them up and then get rid of those cells? And it's really cool stuff because it gets to the very heart of the most cutting edge molecular biology. And I'm, I'm a geek, I like that stuff. And it's being discussed here. It's being discussed here at a level I've, that blows my mind, like never before. And there was a meeting before the meeting for two days organized by Nobel laureate Francois Barre Sinose, who co-discovered HIV, to just focus on this with the leading minds. And it, it was great. Very interesting. Thank you, John. Thanks we'll so talk much, to Jeff. you again tomorrow. Okay. Okay.